In today's show, we're going to be going over a five-step system for Amazon PPC keyword optimization, which is just a fancy word for saying we're going to adjust your bids with bulk operation files. Now, I know a lot of you guys got scared there when I just said the word bulk operations, but believe me when I say it is the easiest way to adjust bids. It adjusts bids very quickly, and we do it in a very systematic way that it literally takes less than 10 minutes to do. And yeah. you can adjust pretty much your whole campaign, depending on how big your campaign is, of course, or your campaign manager and your Amazon PPC. But I'm not the expert in this. Well, I kind of am, but I brought a better expert in to show you this. So I'm going to actually hand it over to Melissa. She's going to share her screen and walk you through this right now. So bulk uploads can be very scary. The, just the term of it is something that a lot of people are scared to use. But once you master this, you will see that using bulk uploads is super efficient for what you're trying to do if you're not already automating your bids. We'll go through what you can do to uh, use your CPA with what you're actually performing on in your conversions and how you can adjust your bids based on that to maintain profitability. Right. Okay, so you're going to find yourself in campaign manager first. The first thing that I'm going to show you guys how to do is to actually find your bulk download. Um, if you've not ever used bulk downloads before, you might not even know where to look for them or how to download them, format them, and even use them. So you'll start in campaign manager here. You're going to go to your sponsored ads. Bulk operations is where you're going to find this. So what I like to do is with this one, you can go back 60 days, but I really like to do 30 days. For me, 30 days is a lot more realistic. 60 days can bring in some things that maybe uh, happened, you know, two months or a month ago, two months ago, but 60 days or 30 days really gives you that like now or in the now or in the present. This is what I like to do with this one. So that's a good date range for it. So you're going to update your date range to 30 days within what to include things you're going to include. For this, we're just going to focus on sponsored products right now because this is the bread and butter of everything that you're doing. This is where your focus should be. So sponsored products data is the only one that you're going to pull in. For this, I'm not going to pull in anything with zero impressions because I only want to look at uh, the keywords that I have conversions on because that's how our calculations are going to work in terms of changing your bid um, and maintaining that profitability with your uh, cost per acquisition. So don't select this one, just the sponsored products data and for 30 days. You're going to create spreadsheet for download, file requested. This, like it says, can't take up to 15 minutes. If you have a lot of campaigns within your sponsored products, this can take like 20 minutes almost. Like it, it does take quite some time to pull that data in there. It can be a very, very large sheet. So just be prepared for a big file. If you, you know, uh, archive things and all of that, but if you chose campaign items with zero impressions, it probably won't be as big as one of those. But if you did click that, it is going to be a little bit larger. So I've already gone ahead and done this. I've already downloaded. This is what will come up when it's ready. You'll see the download link here. Go ahead and download that. Mine download into my browser so I can pull them from here. They may download into a different file system for yours, however your computer works for where you're putting those. The next thing you're going to want to do is pull up a Google Sheet. So you're going to work within a workbook. We're actually going to work within two today, but the first one you're going to work in is just going to be completely blank and we're going to bring in that bulk download. So we'll do file, import, and upload. And then I'm going to bring this in right here. Insert a new sheet into this one that you're already working with. If you create a different spreadsheet, it kind of screws up what you're doing as far as just uh, file organization. So I like to do insert a new sheet here. First thing we're going to do for formatting is delete sheet one. And we're going to delete the portfolios because we don't need those for this. All right. And then you've got your sponsored products campaigns. And I know, like I said, this can be very, very overwhelming if you're looking at this for the first time. It is a ton of data in here, but I'm going to show you the data that you need to use to just get these uploaded uh, and update your bits. And then we're going to go from there. So let's get this formatted and pared down to exactly what you need to get that done. I am a bold and freeze header for many, many years. It is just the way that I love to format these, but we're going to start there just so that you know what headers you have already. I think it's really important to just keep that there, especially if it's a big file that you've not yet worked with. The next piece that we're going to do here is we are going to just filter down to the keywords and the product targeting. So add your filter at the top here. Under your entity, what we're going to do is clear this and then we're going to select keyword and product targeting. Hit the okay on that one. And then we're gonna go over to here. We're going to go to state. We want to make sure that's just enabled. We want to do campaign state, take everything that's paused out because we don't need to update those. And if you're running multiple ad groups, if you're not yet using Quartile or using something that has the single keyword ASIN, if you have other things running within there, just make sure that you double check this so that you're not um, updating any uh, with anything with an ad group that's paused. So you want that to be enabled as well. All right. So we've got it down to product targeting and keyword. We've got everything down to the enabled. And now what we're going to take out is the uh, zero order because the way, the, the way that the calculations work, we can't update those if we don't have the data for an order there. We'll go ahead and 
fix that one. There we go. And one more thing that you can do to pare this down even a little bit more. We are not going to have to do this with this one specifically because uh, this bulk download I already know is only for one product. But if you have multiple products, you're going to want to separate those out. So you'll separate those out into different sheets and you'll work with each product individually. The reason that that is, is you have a different CPA for each of those products and you want to make sure that you're not working with the wrong product CPA to determine what you're going to bid and spend on a different product. So what we're going to do with this then is I'm going to select everything that's filtered and I'm going to copy. I'm going to add another sheet and paste that there. Again, big, bold and freeze header person. But then within this, we have all of the data that we need to update bids for this specific one. So at the end of this sheet, we're going to add three columns. So the three calculations that we are going to show you today is clicks to orders, max CPA, and max CPC. Max CPA is a formula that you've already figured, but I am going to import that data in here because we have it and you need it. So one of the things that I like to do within working within the one workbook is add in a, another sheet for max CPA. And I'm actually going to pull this uh, from something that you guys had already figured. So you have your max CPA and your break even A cost. You're going to reference chapter four where you figured your max CPA according to your break even A cost. So what I like to do is just take this sheet uh, from what we had figured previously and then add it into the workbook that I'm currently working in just so that I have it readily available. This is super helpful as well if you are working with multiple products. So if you have, let's say, four star products that are bringing in 80% of your revenue, you're gonna have four different sheets of your campaigns, you're gonna have a different max CPA for each of those because you'll have different profitability for those. So this is what we're working with here. The max CPA for this product specifically is $7.65. So I'm going to go back to my new sheet and within my three columns here, I'm going to add my headers for clicks to orders. I'm going to add max CPA and I'm going to add max CPC. I'm going to pull this max CPA and put this back here in the one, the keywords that I'm working with. And I'm just going to drag that down because I know that this one applies to everything within this specific uh, sheet because it's all for the same product. So. Figuring your clicks to orders, it is as literal as it says. You are just going to divide your clicks by your orders. So we just add the formula here for equals clicks divided by orders and hit enter. You can do the autofill for that, which makes it super easy. And then to figure your max CPC, which is your max cost per click for this keyword based on your max CPA, you are going to add the formula of max CPA with the clicks per orders. So the first one we're going to do within the sequence is the max CPA and then divide that by your clicks per orders and hit enter. And this gives you your max CPC for this specific keyword or ASIN target based on its current performance of the 30 days. So you can go back 60 days, but like I said, if you have um, like we, recently we've had Black Friday or if you've had a Prime Day, if it's in July, your numbers may be a little bit skewed. You just want to be careful if you've had a really high traffic day that's not normal, that you're not incredibly increasing these bids just for that when you take that data into consideration when you're back down into just like a regular shopping period. So the next thing that we do with this once we have our calculations in place, what I like to do is I'm going to sort the sheet by max CPC because I really want to take a look at what this is telling me to change my bids to. We don't want to be robotic in this. We want to use dynamic thinking and um, be strategic. It might not make sense to change some of these as high as they are going to be just based on the metric. So uh, select your entire sheet. I always do data sort range advanced. I've got a header row and max CPC, and then I do high to low. So I can see already that I know I know none of my bids right now are at $7 for this product, and this is because it has one click per one order, which is not generally the norm. So it's not, I know that it's not going to convert every single time it clicks. So this is something that I'm gonna give some special attention to. I'm gonna look at this one. What I also wanna do is look at what those actual targets are to make that determination. The easiest way to do this is to hide these three columns here, these bidding, um, bidding strategy placement and the percentages columns. We're gonna hide those. And then I'm gonna hide everything in gray except for my max. So this gives me the opportunity to actually look at what my current bid is at, what my keyword is, what the match type is, if I want to take a look at that. And then I can also look at if it's an ASIN target, but if it's an ASIN target, I can look at what the ASIN is. So I can see, does it make sense to change it to something that high? Does it not? You know, what is kind of the difference in what we're doing here? So this is kind of the main concern that I have going into this one when I take a look at it from 
analyzing strategic standpoint is this is seven dollars and 65 cents on baker's costume now this product is a baker's costume but the idea that it is going to convert every single time someone clicks would be amazing but it's a little bit uh, a little bit dreamy a little bit magical I, I really don't think that that's realistic um, I would like to increase this, but I don't want to increase it to $7.65. So for me, I would like to increase this maybe by 30% and see how it performs, just knowing that it has converted and it's done well. But what I don't want to do is increase it to $7, have it spend a ton of money, and then have it blow out everything for my profitability for the week that, that comes between when I do this now and when I do it later. Um, so you just want to make sure that you're not just being robotic, copy pasting everything over and then going, oh no, what happened? Well, this is what happens when you don't actually look at it. So this is something that we would go through um, just on an individual standpoint. I would look at it based on the keywords. Again, this is a brand keyword for us. It still wouldn't make sense to do $7 on it, but we would probably increase this one a little bit more. I might double this because it's a brand keyword, but this one especially, I would not increase that to $7.65. So uh, for the purposes of this, I'm just going to leave these as is for now, but um, you would look at those a little bit differently from a strategic standpoint. The other ones here do look pretty good. They are a little bit of an increase, but uh, based on what I've seen from the clicks to orders, I think these all all look really great. I select all of these, I copy, and then what I want to do here is just paste values only. It's an, important to do that because what you're doing is pulling over that formula. If you just hit paste, it'll tell you that it doesn't make sense, like it won't compute anything. So this is really what you're looking for with that. Because I'm not adding these three in for right now, I am going to take those out um, because I'm not going to put them in my upload. I'm going to consider them um, separately. So I've deleted my rows there. And I've got everything enabled. Okay, so you've got your bulk download here. You've got everything set up. For me, I like to open all of this back up here. And I like to keep a, I like to keep essentially like a backup copy of the reasons, the reasonings why I've done these bits. So if I want to go back and look at it, if something has gone completely wrong, I want just that hard copy showing me why I've done what I've done. So the next thing that you're going to do is copy this one into another workbook. So we're going to just open spreadsheet, new workbook here. I'm going to take everything from just this sheet and I'm going to copy that into my new workbook. And for this one, I am going to call this my bulk upload because this is what's actually going to go into campaign manager. Okay, so within this, the way that you get these to update is you actually have to change column C, the operation to update. And you're going to take that and you're going to pull that all the way down. You want to come over and just check to make sure that there's nothing kind of weird. Make sure that, the, that no pause stuff came in. It's kind of a double check for you there. I've got my bids here and these do make sense with what I had done previously. My keyword text, my match type. I have my product targeting and my resolve product targeting. This one is great, but you do need this to upload it. So the next thing I do with this to do the bulk upload, because I don't want uh, Amazon to look to look at any of this and compute it in any kind of a different way or give me an error. I'm gonna actually delete all of my metrics from the bulk upload, including the three columns. So I'm just gonna get all of those metrics out of there so Amazon can't take any of that into consideration to give me an error. So this is ready to go now. You've got your operation update. All of your bids are updated. All we're doing here is updating keywords and product targeting bids. So you'll go to file, download, and you want to download it as an XLSX file, a Microsoft Excel file, because that's what Amazon prefers for upload. Once you have that, you'll go back into campaign manager and the bulk operations portal. This is number three, where you upload your file to update your campaigns. So from here, you will choose your file, and this is my bulk upload file. So just choose it from wherever it's saved within your computer. And I've got that here. You can just verify that it's the right file name and then you're gonna upload process changes. Once you do that, it'll kind of reset itself. And then if you give it a minute, there it is. So sponsored ads bulk file may take up to three hours to process and it's processing the upload. Now you can see we've tested this a few times with a couple different things. If you have finished with warnings, it means that there's an error within your bulk, your bulk upload. You've either probably most likely not included something you were supposed to or included something that you weren't supposed to or you didn't uh, put update in your operations column to update it, that's usually what's uh, the most common thing there. Or you've left all your metrics in with the three columns that we've added. If you don't take those out, Amazon will give you an error for those. So um, it's as easy as that. So once you just go through those, just make sure you're taking a look at it and then you upload them and it'll tell you how it goes. Melissa, amazing, thank you. So action items for this, 
Download those bulk operation files, calculate your maximum cost per click, re-upload it back into Amazon Campaign Manager. Now, key thing with this is you need to schedule to do this weekly. What I see a lot of sellers do that aren't as experienced in PPC is they're going to go into the campaigns individually and like adjust them today. And then three days later, they might adjust them again. And then they might adjust them later on and they don't really know what they're doing. They don't know what they did. And so schedule it once a week. It will take you 30 minutes to an hour, depending on how big your account is. And just schedule this, put it in your calendar to do, to recur every week, but make it work for you. And another key to this is there are a lot of softwares out there that can automate this part. I don't recommend softwares that will take over your entire campaign manager, but I do recommend softwares that will help automate bid op optimization. Because as you can see here, you can do this all the time to adjust your cost per clicks, but you're not taking into account other things like day parting. Day parting is just fancy words for your conversion rate changes every single hour of every single day. And there are softwares that will take that into account and they'll adjust your bids up one hour and then down the next hour, depending on your conversion rate for your product. And so there's a lot more that goes into bid optimization than just uploading a bulk file. So if you're interested in learning how we automate this inside the agency, make sure you head to ProfitablePineapplePharm.com. We actually teach this. We teach you how our agency manages clients. And so I highly recommend that if you're feeling a little overwhelmed by this video to come into the Profitable Pineapple Farm, go to ProfitablePineapplePharm.com and we'll coach you through this. We'll teach you exactly how we do it. We'll teach you or one of your teammates, even better, one of your teammates, how to do this. So go check out ProfitablePineappleFarm.com. And Melissa, thanks for the amazing video today.